You see this happen again and again in American society over the last 300 years. Earning by learning, for example, just out of our speeches and things, is now in 17 states. It originally started with Dr. Mel Steely of West Georgia College and myself, and we ran the entire project with uh, Mel getting a very tiny amount of money, working part-time out of his home, and I'd wander around the country and make speeches, and people would call him. And he'd then send him a package of material, and they would then say, well, this is all exciting, and it works. It's a, it's a remarkable system. Uh, now we have a foundation, and, and uh, Don Jones of Wisconsin is organizing it, uh, working with the Library of Congress. It's the Earning by Learning Foundation, and it's easy to call. People can call 1-800-214-EARN. And for example, Governor Romer's wife in Denver is now going to be actively uh, leading an Earning by Learning program this summer, and uh, he's a Democratic governor of Colorado. Uh, in Cabrini Green, one of the biggest housing projects in America, in Chicago, they're going to have an Earning by Learning program this summer. As I said, at Moton Middle School in, in uh, Washington, they're going to bring learning. So, this is an idea that we're continuing to push to evolve, to grow. Uh, take a look at it for a minute at Earn to Learn, uh, which is one of the particular uh, TV uh, coverages of this concept. The Earn to Learn program provides students with an incentive to read. Second and third graders read a book and write star reports. Then give an oral report to dealership employees. Students and volunteers discuss the book title, author, central theme, characters, and favorite passages. The volunteer then signs the student's reading record, entitling second graders to earn 25 cents per book and third graders 50 cents per book. Texas Commerce Bank provided, free of charge, savings accounts for all students participating in the Earn to Learn program. Account books are kept at school and each child is responsible for recording deposits and maintaining their account balance. The result is a program that teaches the students a connection between learning and earning, a tangible reality in our adult world. And so far, I have read about between 20 and 30 books with the Earth to Learn program. Mike Smith and C.W. Kahn of Kahn's Appliances, the school's business and education partner, presented the program to Betty Cooper, Lucas Elementary School principal. And it sounded like a good idea, but we didn't know it was so much work involved in getting the bank statement set up and all the things that we had to do. We got permission from our school district, and everything went well. And uh, I guess the best part <coughs> about all of this was when uh, Mr. Smith uh, said that he would, in turn, give us the tutors for the program so that we wouldn't have to take any of the teachers or volunteers from any other program to do this. Mike Smith committed to the Earn to Learn program even before he had a chance to talk to his employees about it. But the worthiness of the program was plain to see. And since October, more than 80% of the employees at Mike Smith Auto Plaza have volunteered to participate in Earn to Learn. Uh, we have approximately eight to nine tutors per Tuesday to come out and listen to the children read. And the kids have really enjoyed it. Well, I think they do it because they love children and they want us to learn. I leave here every time I come with such a peaceful feeling and can't wait to come back the next time. When we first started this program, Mike set it up where we come mainly every six to seven weeks and I find myself coming every week now because I've gotten so close to the children. I see the benefits in the future of the children by watching them grow week in and week out, week out as they learn to, uh, to read better and write better. I see children going farther in life. What I like about this Earn to Learn thing mostly is that I get to read more books than I, use, than I usually do. Why do you say that? Because I like to read a lot. And I like to read all kinds of books. Academically, these kids have just improved tremendously. The math that's gone up, the uh, reading skills, the writing skills, they're communicating better. The vocabulary it, it's, uh, has broadened. And we must remember, these are at-risk kids. And the big picture is that these kids later will be uh, productive, contributing citizens to our, our community. I want to be a good student whenever I grow up, because I'm going to try to be the best that I can be. Now, notice over here. In this model, if you read, you may get beaten up. In this model, if your choice is to read or practice basketball, there's no question which is the higher value. In this model, not only is it good to read, not only are you, do you get prestige out of reading, but in the earning by learning version, you get money. So 
you take the number of hours you want to go and read, and you suddenly, and part of what we do by, by, by impacting on a particular housing project is you suddenly have 60 or 70 or 80 percent of the second and third graders carrying books around. So suddenly it becomes okay to carry a book. And why are you carrying a book? Because you're going to be able to be part of what works in the free enterprise system. And so suddenly the kids who are the smartest kids aren't the kids who can beat each other up. They aren't the kids who might belong to a local youth gang. They're the kids who are going to have the most money at the end of the summer. And you begin to change the whole psychology. But it's got to be seen as an entire system. Now let's, let's look at another area which has been just tragically not used effectively. And that's pillar four, the spirit of invention and discovery. Yeah, it happened yesterday to, to me with the Federal Aviation Administration. And, and uh, you remember last week, I think, I showed you this is the MIT chart. The little dot uh, that's, that's dark uh, actually has 70 electric engines on it. The sign of micro-miniaturization. Now, as an example of why governments find it very hard to use new technologies, we are the largest purchaser of vacuum tubes left in the world. This is a vacuum tube currently used when you fly in an airplane. To, this is part of the air traffic control system you're flying in. In fact, I think a large number of them are now made in Poland because we are, we're running out of places to make vacuum tubes in the United States. Now, this is a vacuum tube. And again, I want you to think about the notion these are 70 electric motors. Well, the same mindset which has made our, and, and this is not the fault of the FAA. This is the fault of a federal government procurement policy of incredible uh, density and lack of rationality. But the same pattern that makes us obsolescent here also means we don't think about how to help the poor. I, I, uh, uh, you see revolutions around you. Uh, the fact is, uh, if you look at uh, Terry Terrell, who's a student in this class, this is the, all of you now, I think, have your copy of the, the student guide for the class which he put together. This is, this is laptop publishing. This is an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, we live in an age where, where there's no reason every public housing project in America can't have its own newspaper, can't have its own way of communicating with itself for almost no money. But we don't think about how to create technological breakthroughs. I got l laughed at a few weeks ago because I went to the uh, uh, Ways and Means Committee, and I said, at least at the vision level, we've got to be thinking about how do we get a laptop computer to every poor child in America. People say, well, they don't need laptops. Well, you're right. If you're in this model, they don't need laptops. But if you're in this model and you want them to participate in the 21st century, they need laptops as much as anybody does. Because you want to think about wiring the, power of the poor neighborhoods. You can't just have a country where the only people who get wired are upper middle class, and then we say, now, time to go look for a job. Everybody who gets to go look for a job has to be able to use a computer. Raise your hand. Nobody in this group has a clue. Furthermore, if they know they don't have a clue, they have a lower incentive in learning how to read. Because we're asking them to go back to a second wave industrial model of learning, and we're saying to them, all the really clever people who are going to be successful in America, they're down here now. They're already doing third wave information age stuff. But of course, we don't expect anybody who's poor to participate. But you ought to, you ought to work as hard as these people, because you ought to at least pretend you're going to participate. And then you'll have self-esteem. 